I hope you don't get the sickness. Kurt is a stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some rays like Simba or crack like the beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need three wishes Stay-at-home Disney dad So I went to Sunday school as a child and this story I'm about to tell is gonna sound terrifying by today's standards when you say it aloud, but honestly, these are warm memories for me, so stick with it. When I was little, like five or six, my family was super involved in this one church. Every Sunday was Sunday school for an hour before the 90 minute regular church service. It was a long time. Then after church, Sometimes later in the day, sometimes Sunday night, there would be another church meeting or a special get together or a presentation. So what they would do with the kids while the adults met was send them downstairs in the church. Now the church basement had no windows. It was one long space with like classrooms on each side, but it wasn't a hallway. It was a pretty big space in between the classrooms and the walls that made up the classrooms with like the doors collapsed. And you could either have one small little space with three classrooms on each side, or you could collapse the walls and have one giant room. Now at the end of this room was a small stage. It was like an elementary school gym stage, that kind of an idea, but smaller. Now behind the stage, there was this tiny room with like an old couch, a beanbag chair, and one of those TVs and VCRs on a rolly cart. And that's where they would stick the kids during these nights. And we would watch movies back there. So yes, this church basement, no windows, behind a stage in a tiny room with only one way in and one way out. That's where I remember seeing small one. It's hard to explain to anyone who was born after like 1997, but in the 80s and early 90s, man, God talk was everywhere. Even if you didn't go to church, it was everywhere, even in public schools. Now, obviously, especially at Christmas time. So yes, while we live in a country that should respect all religions and beliefs equally, these old-timey Christian-themed Christmas cartoons still put me exactly where I need to be around the holidays. Good memories. Small One surprisingly holds up. This is a Disney masterpiece from the mini collection. We start, the song Small One starts playing and it's gonna stick in your head for the rest of the month. It plays over the opening pictures. We start with the stills of the boy and his donkey. This dark art style is what I live for. The blues of the night, amazing. We start inside a humble home and the boy wakes up his senior citizen donkey and warns him not to let his dad find him sleeping the day away again. See, small one is small and old and basically useless when it comes to the family's day-to-day -day operations. It can't carry or haul anything anymore and they can't afford to keep buying food for this animal that has no return. Dad calls his boy to get the donkeys ready. The other donkeys are big and strong. Small one, like I mentioned, can't even haul sticks anymore while dad loads giant logs onto the other donkeys for transport. The animation of this child is amazing. They nailed this little kid body language. Dad says what the boy fears. They can't afford to keep small one anymore. Tomorrow he has to take small one to town and sell him for one piece of silver. The kid starts to cry. And I feel this in my bones because as an adult, like I get it, but that part of me deep down that is still kind of a child is devastated seeing this. The kid asks to take small one himself tomorrow to sell him. Dad agrees. That night the kid puts on a brave face and promises small one he's only going to sell him to someone who will care for him. So we get another song. And again, this is what my childhood feels like. This is what sitting, looking at the calendar, and it's only like December 11th, and 14 days seems like a freaking decade, and you, you're so excited and busy, you don't even know what to do with yourself, because you have nothing else in your entire life to worry or think about, except December 25th and opening those packages under the tree, right? Okay, he says, the only way I'll sell you is to someone special, and that's foreshadowing, but you just don't know it yet. The next day, the boy takes Small One to town. A guard asks him what his business is. He says, to sell my donkey. This whole guard looks at the animal, laughs, and says, I know just the guy. Third shop through these gates. So the boy takes his donkey to the shop, and this guy is like, 
you have a donkey to sell? And it's the tanner. It's the, there's animal skins and hides all over the place. He wants to make leather out of small one. The kid and small one freak out and they run away and they knock everything over. The background animation of this town or village is just amazing for the year. This was some of Disney's best work. Now we go predictably a little bit racist. There's these three swindlers who are pretty harsh stereotypes. They sing about how much they love money and they'll lie to anyone to get it. The animation of this kid again, once again, phenomenal. I can't get over how they nailed little child body language. It's so good. He talks to the one guy who was completely voiced by the Tony the Tiger voice actor and he tells him, I do not want this donkey. It's not great. Don't laugh at that. The three swindlers tell him to go three blocks over to the auctioneer. He goes there and the auctioneer is auctioning off prime animals. This isn't going to end well. Small one ends up on stage and the auctioneer starts mocking him. The crowd laughs. The kid says his donkey is kind and good enough to be in a king's stable. More foreshadowing that kind of went over my head this time, but it means nothing at this point. Auctioneer finds that statement hilarious and he parades Small One around the stage. Everyone's just open mouth, gawking and pointing, laughing at this poor animal. The auctioneer pulls on Small One's face and ears. Then he sits his fat ass on the donkey and starts to ride it while the crowd roars and Small One screams in and out of pain. Small One finally has enough and he bucks him off and the crowd laughs and the auctioneer loses his crap and he tells the guards to get him and the guards chase this kid and Small One away. That night, it's sit bedtime. Kid, the kid is defeated. He can't sell small one. They both have a nap. They're sad. They wake up and a man is standing over them. The man is nice and he's in need of a donkey for his pregnant wife to ride. You better believe it's Mary and Joseph on their way to Bethlehem for the census. Joseph can only pay one silver coin and small one likes this guy. So does the kid. He sells small one and small one transports Mary to Bethlehem to give birth to Jesus in a stable. Again, this is a Disney review. I have no desire to dig into the merit of Christianity or religion as a whole and the positives and the negative impacts the concept of God or gods has had over the world since the beginning of time. But to me personally, oh my God, this is warm Christmas spirit in the form of a VHS tape. It ends with a choir singing small one as it tilts up to the sky and we see the, sh the star shining down on the manger. There's not even a beat though before we go into ads for like 17 other Disney VHS tapes for sale. Like, I'm a little triggered by that in like a Charlie Brown Christmas kind of way. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you.